All right, three, two, one, and we are now live in another episode of The Bid Nerds. My name is John Polnick, along with my partner, Michael Deeb. We are your daily nerd out of the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer and even sometimes other auctions like P-Car Market, maybe even eBay. Ugh. Who knows what we get to? Um, but, but hey, you know, we uh, what we do is we, we, we talk about all the, the, the neat cars that are coming up and, and going on the auction block and we make predictions about what they're going to sell for or what we think they won't sell for. We talk about why the cars, uh, some cars do well on one platform, but maybe not another. Sometimes one car is way better off on bring a trailer and not so well on cars and bids and vice versa. It's amazing to see how different the money is between the different platforms. And uh, Michael D and I have been paying close attention to this for months now. And um, that's why we decided to start doing this crazy show. We keep track of our predictions. And uh, we have a little bit of a competition. We start off every show with a, hey, how are you? And then we go and uh, we, we we talk about how each other did the day before. And uh, yeah. how how are you, Michael Deeb? Jiggy, man, yesterday was a weird one, huh? It we was, yeah. Two, two draws yesterday. And uh, yeah, I love how you phrase that. We, we've we been doing this for months now, so we're experts. Listen to us. Uh, watch the show. Listen to us, but don't take our advice. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that's a, the that's a big thing. I mean, you know, we've been talking to people off air a lot about the show. And, you know, one thing that we really want is we want to, in, we want to involve you. If you're watching, uh, we're live right now on Facebook. Um, this particular episode is not live on YouTube, uh, but it will be up on YouTube in just a few minutes. Um, you know, play along with us. Uh, tell us what you think your predictions are. We, that's what we, that's why we really got into this. We wanted to hear what you guys think. Um, play along, uh, sooner or later, as we continue to do this, we do this every uh, weekday, uh, Monday through Friday during about the nine o'clock hour. Um, but we're going to, we want to start competing, not with just each other, but we want to compete with you guys and we're going to give you prizes. We're going to give you guys props. If you guys, uh, are, if someone's better than this out there on the internet, <laughs> we want to invite you on as a third nerd and help yeah. us out because we are terrible. Um, but no, this is just a conversation about the cars that we really love and we really like the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. And it's not really cars that we have no itinerary. We have no, uh, we have no skin in the game. None of these cars are ours. We don't know the no. people that are selling these cars. These are just cars that yeah. we find Thank interesting, goodness. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they punch us in the they face. They might all uh, <laughs> come in and find us. It's a good thing we're in two different places. Michael Deeb over there is in san francisco and i'm on the las vegas strip that's why we're the best show we're that's why the, we're the best live show on the las vegas strip right now because we're the only one um but uh yeah so there it is that's what bid nerds is so let's get to it let's talk about the cars that we made predictions on yesterday and let's see yeah. how close our predictions were oh, where do we man. start mike I don't know. This is this is such a tough day. Let's start with our hero card. I don't know why you're so defeated. I I felt <sighs> like yesterday was very interesting, not because any misses. I I was I was amazed how you know of the parody. We were yeah. so close on our bids, and yeah. yeah. I mean, let's let's talk about the cars. Which one do you want to you want to talk about the star car from yesterday? Yeah, the star car was the 1992 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo One. Now, if I remember correctly, JP, this car is showing just like fifty thousand miles. But these were, you know, this is a gray market import. This car was not sold in the United States. As such, it is a right-hand drive example of one of Mitsubishi's early and successful homologation vessels. They took the basic bitch Lancer platform and turned it into a world rally winner. Um, I think the uh, fish rally driver, Marco... No, what's his name? Mackinnon, Tommy Mackinnon. I think he drove one of these things with Marlboro livery and won the world championship. But uh, anyways, really you think cool that car. has anything to do with the bid? What are we talking about? Some guy named Rubio or something. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I tell you what, at, at $15,000, which was the sale price, right? This thing hammered at 15500 I don't think anybody cared about its world rally provenance. I think they just <laughs> liked that it was an unusual Mitsubishi because... Well, man, what was oh, you? Man. What did you predict, and what did I predict? I can't even remember. Twenty-four hours ago, I, a long time. I, 
I thought this car would bring at least eighteen thousand dollars, and unsurprisingly, you thought the under and bet fourteen. This car sold at fifteen five, so you beat me by wow. five hundred bucks wow. as we straddled that car's uh, hammer price, which uh, would so be that- the trend for the entire day. Uh, we were just totally splitting it. Okay, so what was the next car? Next car was. Uh, JP, listen, this is a mm. you and Rochelle special. This is the mm. 63 Cadillac Eldorado Biritz convertible. This is the Las Vegas Strip Boulevard Cruiser, if ever there was one. Mm. A beautifully restored example with a big 390 V8. Um, the Biritz, the Eldorado Biritz only came as a convertible. So these are uh, pretty unique cars and so iconic of the era. Uh, I, at that at that point, I thought this car would bring $35,000. You were a little more and you had $31,000. This car is one of the only cars that superseded our bids. It brought $37,500 and sold for my first win of the day. So you know, you and I should have known on this one. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I bid under you on this one. I mean, I've been actually, uh, truth be told, I've been kind of looking for a 70s uh, Eldorado convertible to maybe put on right. Turo here in Vegas when when, when tourists start coming back. You know, it, you know, and, and the 60s ones are just a lot more expensive than the 70s. And I had in my head 70s. Uh, you know, which which yeah. are in the twenties, you know, maybe thirty right. if it's like the perfect one. And I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe my wife slipped something in my coffee um, yeah. uh, because she doesn't want me to get one. I don't know what it is. But uh, you you candidly, what are your candid takes yesterday while we were discussing this car was that you thought that the Cadillacs were starting to come down, and that mm-hmm. might be true of the seventies era cars. Yeah. But these early sixties Cadillacs are uh, holding their own as a collector. Um, while the entire market might be a little soft, I'd say these are a bright spot for Cadillacs. Really? I mean, is, wouldn't you have said like uh, is, five years ago that this car would have been a $50,000 car? I feel like this I car is un- way down. No, not way down, though. Not like, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, not like a 74, maybe, you know? No? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, these cars are built to a much better standard than the 70s cars. And yeah. um, and I think are going to, you know, just be a little more impervious to the market. Uh, moving on. Also want to bring a trailer. We looked at a 2000 BMW Z8. Um, kind of a fishy auction because there were only a couple of bids uh, for a car that's extraordinarily expensive. Um, there were comments on the uh, car were not great, uh, suggesting that this car might have a um, uh, a weird history, maybe as a rental or something. Um, you and I both poo pooed. Completely any- unsubstantiated, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, we both poo pooed that kind of rhetoric. If you don't have evidence, shut the f- up. And then um, I, I, we were all over this car. I said 189000 you said 183,000 and this car sold at $186,000. That's unbelievable. Create, creating our uh, first draw of the day. Uh, so there you go. We were all over that one. Um really selected by you you picked a 2005 Mercedes-Benz S7. Remember that Z8 had 17,000 miles. Your Texas owned um 500 SL had just 13,000 miles. And, uh, and these made a nice juxtaposition to compare these two cars because Mercedes really overproduces the SL. And uh, in the secondary market, here's a car with less miles and five years younger. And uh, I bet 30000 you bet 28000 for this pristine example. And the car sold for 29000 or I should say about $140,000 less than that Z8. So, I mean, is that amazing or what? It is. One, it's amazing. And two, it's amazing how th- the fact that it nearly brought $30,000. I mean, anywhere. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's very low miles, but this is the, about the worst spec version of one of these red on oh. tan uh, with, with the horrible wheels. wood trim and no AMG package. I mean, this is a $13,000 car uh, with normal miles. Give it a right. premium for having the super low miles and maybe it's worth 17 or 18. Gosh, right. on a good day, the the right doctor's wife wants this thing uh, and totally. you get 30 for it, or I'm sorry, 20 yeah. for it, but 29, that's just, that's just ludicrous. Ludicrous. I, I agree. I agree with you. That car was well sold. <laughs> anyway. Some, yeah. G- good job on the seller. Yeah, if you're scoring this at home, that car landed right between our bids, creating the second draw of the day. So four, four cars in, and we're dead heat. Um, and then the uh, the tiebreaker, and this one kills me because you always do these cars better than I do. Uh, 1983 Volkswagen Westfalia van again. Um, I believed the uh, lack of hype on this auction and bet $18,000 on this 400,000-mile example. <laughs> and you said twenty three. 
And I really thought I was going to win this one. And I, JP, I watched this auction. I watched every minute of this auction. <laughs> I was so mad when it when it finally split the difference at like twenty thousand five hundred, and somebody else bid. I was furious. I was like, <laughs> I'm like Paul Nick really going to win this one? Anyway, this car sold at twenty three thousand five hundred. I didn't even watch the end of the auction. I was so upset. I went. And kick the wall anyways well uh, okay so- hold on a second here's the thing you're tr- you're trying to compete with me on a van which one of the two of us is more likely to live in a van i mean clearly uh at some oh, point God, or another down by the river uh that's yeah, more yeah. i mean i have lived in a van so this is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in one of these as a matter of fact so yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah. my wheelhouse you have all the italian trash and ferraris and stuff totally. anybody don't better get if you if we if we're talking <laughs> about a some kind of ferrari or fiat from the 60s don't take my advice he's the guy to listen to but if it's a piece uh, of junk volkswagen <laughs> air cool that's leaking oil everywhere and is you know might be a homeless uh encampment that's that's yeah. where I'm at. That's that's yeah. that's the level so I'm not, usually working it, with. Add add insult to injury. Not only did I lose that auction, my wife's pissed we didn't buy it. So there you <laughs> go. <laughs> that would have been a great one for you guys to buy. You know, I mean, the thing is, uh, yeah. I I was even I was looking at him like I, I've been She'd searching around, going, God, you know, I right now that just seems like a great thing to do. You see, you look at some of the pictures of people advertising. And you see them parked by a beach somewhere or whatever, and you're going, Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Listen, li- listen, real quick, and then we'll wrap this up. That kitchen in that van is probably the nicest one I can recall seeing. Although Esther prefers the generation right before that, the last air cooled generation, I would say the inside of that van was absolutely the coolest one I've seen in a long time. So there you it, go. Uh, it was very well done. Really? Uh, sorry, I didn't Seriously. have the pictures yeah. uh, up no, uh, really? quickly really? enough, but yeah. Good stuff. Right. Good stuff. Want one. Uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, well, that was yesterday's car. So that's kind of what we do is we we talk about the cars, what we think they're going to go for. Um, we talk about how we did yesterday. Usually I'm better at it. Uh, and then, yeah, I threw that in. Um, <laughs> and then we talk about the cars that we're predicting today. We have uh, yeah. five more cars uh, to talk about. And if you want to play along, again, we really want your bids. What do you think these cars will go for? Um, it will give a shout out to the person who does better than us. On top of that, we're going to throw some prizes out. And on top of that, we want to know what cars you want us to talk about. We don't just want to yeah. talk about the cars that we pick. Give us some suggestions on auctions that are coming next week, and we'll talk about those, and we'll make those part of the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. Uh, so let's get to today's cars. What are we going to start? Yeah. What's our, our hero car? Uh, do we remember what our hero car is? I believe. I, I don't know um, what my name is. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Sorry about that, folks that are watching. It's the 912, a 69 Porsche 912. All right. Let's start with that. Now, Beautiful car. Oh, my JP, God. Look at this thing. I, I think Tony Mazzagatti sold a guy who's in the Vegas region a car that is very similar to this. Is that not mm-hmm. right that, that Mazzagatti sold him this sort of, uh, is it like sunflower yellow or something? I don't know. It's a 912 that belongs to some of the PCDIs in the valley and how's it got either sold him the car or told him to buy the car and became available and it is a it is a pristine car this car is arguably nicer i don't know that i've seen a nicer 912 anyway absolutely stunning this car is brought to us out of lincoln north carolina has a numbers matching 1.6 liter flat four this is a 1969 912 that has been completely redone and i jp i think you're going to be stunned when you find out how high my bid is on this car because Mm. believe it or not 912s are moving in the right direction now i am a staunch believer in the 911 and i completely understand why porsche built the 912 what i can't wrap my head around is why 912s are bringing this kind of money. I just don't understand it. I understand that when the 911 market goes up, then it'll bring the 912 market with it. But why somebody would spend the money to restore a car like this, when if they had spent that money on a 911, they would get an even greater return on their investment. It just doesn't make sense to me. I I know there's not as many of these as around, and numbers have to do with value, but uh, there's no appeal to these cars because I don't ever, ever, ever want to drive one i don't desire driving a four-cylinder porsche it, unless it has a turbo on it so there you go um tell Says me the guy who wants this. a 914 what the heck is that about i want a 914 sticks that's gonna oh, be okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 
and I want it. My wife wants it. So, you know, there you well, go. you know, our friend uh, Mauricio from three pedal posse up in the Northwest uh, has one of the most beautiful nine twelves uh, ever uh, restored, but he put a six cylinder in it, you know, and it was at Ren sport reunion a few years ago when he debuted the car and it got so much attention. Um, this it's uh, ironically this particular color. And I don't know what this color is called. And I don't know oh, if really? I'm, uh, if I'm, if I'm uh, divulging a secret that was given to me, but I believe Mauricio is planning on um, restoring his 964 that he's been driving for quite a few years, and he's going to paint it this color. So a 964 yep. in this color would be super dope. And yep. he uh, he usually employs our friend uh, Danny over at DG Vintage uh, up in the Northwest, and, and anybody who knows anything about really cool custom uh, 911s, air cools know that D, uh, Danny is kind of an up and comer he's uh does amazing work but this car yeah this car Shit. is absolutely yeah. beautiful Shit. it's odd it's got a couple of blemishes that i'm like the crack in the dashboard kind of surprises me that they didn't fix that it is weird right yeah jp this is paint code 6805 this is hama yellow yeah. and uh, i will say that in period in the late 60s and early mm -hmm. 70s fiat and alpha uh shared a paint color called okra which is extremely similar. It, it kind of looks mm -hmm. like an old school bus uh, at, at, to a degree. Um, but yeah, it's it's so iconic of the era. And it, I think the color looks great on the car. Yeah. Um, I love the car. I think it's beautiful, beautiful car. Uh, but the four cylinder just doesn't do, I, I wouldn't walk across the street for it. I mean, I don't well, care. We have, <laughs> I've seen a lot of these. I, I, one, I think you're in the minority. Um, and you know, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but uh, th we have seen the values of these climbing. We've seen the, we've seen oh. price on these kind of go up but i don't see the sales of them actually happening i feel like a lot of people think that their cars are worth more than they actually are and they put them up for these ridiculous prices and then they don't move i mean but at the same time how do you get a long hood uh in this i mean really this is a what, what's the size of this engine a one six 1.6 yeah i mean you know uh, a 911 of the era what size is the engine in that 2.2 to uh 69 yeah they just uh oh my god it's at a two liter or 2.2 69 is a 2.2 liter yeah so i mean we're not really talking about that drastically different i mean we are when oh, it I comes down right. to it but i think a lot of people are taking 912s and putting volkswagen engines in and stuff like that i think if you're going to make a hot rod yeah. or something to to cruise around in it's like keep the keep sure. the 912 engine in the in the garage in the back so you have the original equipment On a pallet, throw an yep. inexpensive you know built 2.2 liter volkswagen and make the thing actually rip because it might be faster yeah. than the 2.2 uh six cylinder anyways i don't know where, where do you think this thing's going to be i really love the way Way this car looks uh, so, where is this car sorry yeah it's in it's in north carolina it's in okay. lincolnton north carolina jp last night this car was sitting at thirty two thousand. Yeah. Thirty two thousand last night there's an hour and a half to go and this car is at forty eight thousand yeah. dollars so um here you go my bid is fifty nine thousand dollars i think this car okay. is going to bring a ton of money yeah i i you know i i don't disagree with that um I'm going to bet the under just because I think that's a little, that's kind of a ways to go, but heck I'll go 55. Um, and I'm not going to be surprised if you win this one. Yeah, there you go. All so, right. Very cool car. Interesting. Uh, let's move on to the next one. What do we got? Yeah. Let's jump over to P car for just a minute and All let's right. take a look at P car this market. Look at that. Ninth. Yeah. And now JP, this is, I, there's a couple issues I have with this car, but this is, in my opinion, the iconic Porsche. I've said this to you many times. You know, mm -hmm. when I was a kid growing up in the 80s and I'd go spend time with my dad and we'd drive across the Golden Gate Bridge to go to Tiburon for brunch, you were always, you know, you went into the small town of Tiburon, which is super affluent. That's where Robin Williams grew up. Um, you were always behind a 911 Targa. And so to me, as a kid, an impressionable teenager that couldn't wait to drive, this was the iconic Porsche of, of that era, of, the, of all time. I, I just think this car is incredible. This is platinum gray on P car market. We're looking at um, a 1982 911 SC Targa with 63,000 original miles. Um, the color is stunning. I love this uh, dark gray sort of battleship gray metallic with the black Targa bar uh, and the, the body colored painted Fuchs pedals. Uh, just stunning car. Um, it's offered out of Texas. There's a couple things. One, it's got the traditional 911 SC logo on the back, but down at the lower edge of the rear deck lid, he put a 
a Carrera emblem on there that doesn't belong on the car. Mm -hmm. So I think that looks stupid. And then the (laughs) second, the the second thing is um, he claims as the, uh, the consigner, the seller that the engine had a rebuild, but on the Carfax, it says it had an engine replacement. The thing Hmm. that bothers me, the issue I take with this particular lot is, is simply this Porsche offers either the certificate of authenticity or you go get the classic technical certificate in which they will match the engine number in your car versus the original build spec and give you a certificate to prove that. And this guy doesn't have it. And he knows it's an issue. Mm -hmm. Like it just doesn't make sense to me why he wouldn't have taken care of this if he ever planned to sell the car, which clearly he has come to that conclusion. He needs Mm -hmm. to sell. And yet there's no way for him to prove uh, against the discrepancy on his Carfax. And yet it, it could quite easily be done. So um, anyways, as the, as such, this beautiful car, which shouldn't be a stories car, now has a story to tell that is going to hinder it. The other thing is, is he brought it to P-Car Market. And I, my take on the P-Car Market thing, JP, is this really quickly. I believe P-Car has kind of coddled their audience to the point where the audience might be waiting for this car to close and then try to negotiate a deal on the deal tank. And and so I just wonder if if there. Well, hold on, just so people know what that means. When if the car yeah. doesn't sell uh, at the auction, yep. if it doesn't make the reserve, then P car market unique to the other auctions, the car doesn't just go away. It goes into the the listing goes into basically a classifieds listing. Right. Uh, correct. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but I just I think no, some no, people no, may not no, know that. Yeah. No, thank you for helping me clear it up. Uh, to clear it, uh, clarify that. And so it, you know, it sits there for a couple of weeks. And so what I think is the P car market audience, uh, a lot of the savvy buyers just wait and see. Hey, you know, if this car meets the reserve and it sells, then the hell with it, it goes away. But mm-hmm. if it doesn't, then I can contact the the consigner direct and just make low ball offers. And boom, yeah. you know, we can make a post auction deal for less than what the reserve might have been. Uh, because the guy's now desperate and it's just sitting there. And so I just feel like here's this beautiful car. Um, and there's really no reason to believe the story that it's not the original engine block. Jeez, you know, you could figure that out in some way. But here, beautiful car, it's only got my bids. I mean, it's crazy. It's sitting at $30,911, two hours to go um, out of, uh, let me read this to you, Bear County, Texas. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, if this thing had the, uh, if this thing had normal miles, it was like a hundred fifty thousand mile car or something like that. The engine replacement slash rebuild wouldn't make any difference. Nobody would care as long as right. the engine is good. Uh, then we're good right. to go because this is a driver car. This is not really a collector car. But sixty thousand miles is low enough to where you kind of might want that to matter. I am totally with you. I don't know what the hell he, why he put that Carrera badge on the back of Terrible. it. Uh, especially Terrible, especially since that's the little one that's the career badge off of a mid-year three liter uh, um so it yeah, just looks terrible. extra dumb um what the heck is wrong with me? Like, let me let me make sure that we're both on camera let's give the camera a yeah. huh what are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what are you doing dude uh, uh, why are you, doing, are you making man? your life difficult because that's all you're doing yeah. you're making everyone go beautiful car what the f i mean it's just yeah. Just silly for no good reason. Uh, this this so car bad. could really use a, a strut tower brace. But anyways, um, yep. all right. So all that said, I mean, yeah, it is a beautiful car. It is an awesome car. I would love to own one of these. Um, uh, I have uh, in the past. In yeah. fact, I sold a black one not too long ago. What do you think this car? Well, let's first say, you know, what you, what's your bid? What do you think this car is going to reach? Where is it going to reach on P car market? And what do you think yeah. the car is actually so, worth? Those are kind of so, two different things. Yeah, you know, listen, when we when we look at cars that are on bring a trailer, we usually bid the value of the car. When we mm-hmm. bid cars, certain cars that are in cars and bids, sometimes we're also betting or bidding on the platform. But yeah. with P car market, we're absolutely bidding the platform. And the platform so audience is so small. You don't get a ton of comments and you don't get a ton of bids, so it's hard to read the room. There could yeah. be somebody sitting there that's willing to spend forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars on the star, which is what it should bring. But I don't think that I'm I'm struggling to to decide if it should bring forty-three or if it doesn't even break forty grand. Um, I think the car is too nice, too low miles, too beautiful a color not to. So I'm going to say $43,000, but I am not a hundred percent behind my own bid. <laughs> $43,000 is a very good bid. If it were in a place, uh, I mean, that's what the car's worth. The car's worth somewhere yeah. between 40 and 45. I don't think it breaks 40 on this platform. I think, it, yeah. uh, so I'm going to go 38. Yeah. 
Um, right. Bet the under there. Um, but, you know, I mean, we got to be careful because we have seen some big numbers happen on peak oh, market. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. target, that 96 target the other day was like, where'd that come from? Um, right. So I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> pull that stupid Carrera badge off the back of it and maybe it brings oh 54. What yeah, is wrong with get, you, dude? Get yourself a classic technical certificate and overcome that objection and then put yeah. that car and bring a trailer and he might get 50,000 for a 60,000 mile, really beautiful Targa. I mean, yeah. good guy. One more time, where did you say up. this car was? Is it in Texas? It's in it's in. Bear County, Texas, wherever Bear the heck County, that Texas. is. Yeah. yeah, Texas is the size of its own country, so that could be anywhere. I don't know. Yeah, but that's within uh, driving distance of anywhere on the West Coast, so that's definitely road sure. trip material. You buy this car, you yeah. get a flight out to Texas, oh, wherever yeah, the absolutely. closest city, and that's we a, drive it back to a, Vegas. That's a really good point. There you go. We just we peel that logo off in front of the seller. You look. <laughs> totally. I would have paid. Like, just you look him in the eye while you're peeling it off. I would have yeah. paid five thousand dollars more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just spit a little uh, citrus oil on there. It'll come right off. Yeah. With a card. All right. Card. Yeah. Let's get to the next car. Where are we at? Okay. Cars and Bids is offering a 2007 Mini Cooper S convertible John Cooper Works. Who this cares? Car, Why are we talking car, about this car? This car has 60,000 miles uh, on its supercharged R52. It has a few modifications. And I, I just, I, JP, I picked this car because I laugh at them. I just, it's a, it's a Cooper work convertible. You're talking about trying to make a car that has no structural integrity faster. I, I just, Cabriophobe. I, I can't hardly think of a more dangerous car to send your kid to high school in than this pile of bolts. Uh, anyways, this car is offered to us out of, I don't even know how to say this one, Gilderland, New York. Uh, with 60,000 miles. Uh, the other thing is, it's absolutely languishing. I mean, I don't know what Coopers are supposed to be worth, but this car, JP, is sitting at $5,800, which is essentially a British tagged BMW. Um, I, it, bizarre. I, I just, I, I don't get anything on this car, you know. Six speed manual. Um, it is a reserve auction, so I have no idea for anywhere near the reserve because I don't have any idea what these cars should be worth. Um, but the modifications, you know, camber plates, strut tower brace, Coney shocks, uh, sway bars. <laughs> I mean, like somebody went out of their way to make this car handle. And I'm like, why don't you try putting a roof on it? You moron. <laughs> so anyways, there you go. Uh, the total oxymoron from Great Britain, the mini Cooper S convertible John Cooper works modded out for track duty. There you go, <laughs> man. You are <laughs> putting me in a position to, to, uh, <laughs> To defend a stupid <laughs> mini. Um, yeah, I mean, you are a total cabriophobe. I just have to put it there. This car so probably handles true. better than your 911. Um, as that's, that's, as as awful a piece of... I mean, I just hate this car. I hate... You know what? I don't hate this car. This. You know what this car is like? What it reminds me of? It reminds me of the, the Volkswagen Cabrio. <laughs> of, exactly. Of the, of the 80s, right? I mean, yep, you know, absolutely. it's a front engine. It's got, you know, it, this thing... I, I, and, I know this car rips. This car is yeah. fun to drive. It's but it's like the you know it's the scooter type thing. It, yep. You know, fun to ride, just, but you don't want anybody to see you doing it. Um, right, right, you know, right. no self-respecting guy can drive this thing. The worst part of this car isn't how it drives, isn't how it looks, isn't like how it handles or any of the body flex or any of that BS because no one's really going to be driving it harder than the body flex. Um, the 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 thing that's <laughs> worse about this car than anything is the community that's built around around Mini. <laughs> It, it is this the biggest pile of dorks on the planet, and there are so many of them. So anywhere you drive this car, it's like yeah. th th there's going to be a guy that's going to come across the parking lot, and he's going to have you know the sneakers that are going to match his car, and he's going to have the checkered flag <laughs> hoodie, and he's going to be vaping, and he's going to be like, yeah. "I really like your mini. Do you autocross?" It's like, oh god, it's uh. like it's like uh, it's like CrossFit. <laughs> it's the same people. Um, I mean, does this car? Oh God! Oh, it's I like crossing. Oh my God! Please print that take on our social uh, media. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, I can totally, I can totally see this guy with like a denim jacket with a lot of pins on it and stuff, right? Yeah, and badges. And it, did you go yeah. to Mini Across America in 2007? No. It was not yeah. nearly as good as 2012 when they had uh, who's the skateboarder guy jump all the cars. I mean, it's like, yeah. oh God, yeah. it's just. It's just, it's just it, and they say the same stuff about did you go to did you go to Radwood or 
lift a cult? Like, yeah, yeah it was amazing. <laughs> All right, here's how this comes down. I'm going to say one last thing, and then we'll get to the bit on this stupid car. Go, Go to an FC soccer game in America. I don't yeah. care what team it is, Timberlands yeah. or the or yeah. the you know up in the Sounders or whatever the hell it is up in the Northwest yeah. or whatever. Go to a soccer game, a professional soccer game, and all yeah. you're going to see in the parking lot is these. That's all yeah. that's in the parking lot: Subarus and Mini Coopers and people with outfits that are like fifty different colors. It's like Euro NASCAR. You know, so, when you go to NASCAR so you, and everybody's got M and M's and and Wonder Bread on their jackets, it's the same J- thing but just different colors. These idiots. So JP, so JP, the bid nerds take is that the Mini Cooper is the scrotum of the MLS because that's where you're gonna hold your balls. Yes. 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 All right. Exactly. Got it. Very nice. Very, Very nice. nice. Okay. He puts Very it together. Nice. All right. Yeah. What's your bid on this red pile of dog crap? I, I put $8,500, and I am not standing behind my bid. I'm going to change it to $7,900. And, again, I, I, I'm not, I don't know what I'm basing this on, but there you go. $7,900, and it should sell because why would you pay more? Okay, I'm at 6500 I think it's just going to – that's it. Uh, it's going to bring a couple bucks. I mean, in New York, who the hell's buying a convertible in New York? Who's going to spend the money to transport this anywhere? Uh, the yeah. audience is limited. It's uh, – cars yeah, – I mean, yeah. whatever. It is a John Cooper Works. This would be the most fun, embarrassing car you could possibly buy. I mean, if you could get that's, this thing for six, $7,000, um, and, you know, if you're a teenager it's, it's, or, you know, a, a young enthusiast, this is a great opportunity to get into a really fun car. Just avoid the people. It, like them it's it's got six or seven thousand dollars worth of parts and labor you know in modifications on this thing i mean yeah. it's like you get the car for free i, I it's crazy to me but yeah. what, how many miles does it have it, on it again um sixty thousand so it's yeah it's, so that's good uh, i mean totally the supercharges go on yeah. these the direct fuel injection is really unreliable i mean there's a lot of issues with these things but it's low enough oh, miles yeah. that it's uh yeah whatever let's move on i don't want to talk about many anymore yeah. All right. So let's jump over to bring a trailer. If I wanted to talk about mini, I would go down to the CrossFit. All right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I had to throw that last CrossFit jab in there. Okay. Uh, we're going to jump over to bring a trailer and we're going to pick up on this 2000 Audi S4 mm. six speed. Uh, this has the venerable 2.7 liter V6 twin turbocharged motor. These cars made 250 horsepower, but unlike its competitor, the BMW M3, the forced induction meant that it had a ton of these cars were actually pretty fast and held their own for a little while the problem is turbos on these are bad they go i think on average jp tell me if i'm wrong they go like every 30 to forty five thousand miles yeah. i mean if you get if you got fifty thousand miles on a pair of turbos there, there's something else wrong with your car because yeah. um th- these things they need to be replaced all the time that being said uh, instead of replacing them with the stock ones, you can put bigger turbos on your car and easily get 350 to 400 horsepower out of this vehicle. And everything else on it feels the same. Uh, this is a pretty nice example offered to us out of Littleton, Colorado, with just 76,000 original miles or two sets of turbos or one set of turbos. <laughs> and, it, and it is in dire need of a second set. And that's why this guy's selling it. Uh, but um, iconic sort of, the, you know, I think most of these cars were made in silver with the black, uh, you know, sort of Recaro looking seats and a six speed manual. I mean, this is the, I, back in period. I wanted one of these really bad. Mm. Um, unfortunately, knew they were sort of out of my uh, budget when I was 30 years old, but really cool car. I've always been kind of a closet fan of the original S4 in this country. There you go. Yeah, I had a black on black one. It really was a fun car. And you're right, uh, in period, it was really the best looking kind of sports sedan you could get in that that kind of small size. But boy, Vag, Vagcom or Volkswagen brethren um, were really having trouble back then with quality. Um, the you know, I mean, the yep. interior was exactly. just fantastic for its time. But, you know, everything broke on that thing from window regulators to dashboard yeah. LED lights to wheel speed sensors and, you know, not to mention the big stuff, the turbos. And this V6 engine with the turbo had that terrible timing chain issue and yep. Uh, yep. that was yep. just catastrophic. And, and, you know, and then on top of it all, throw in some Audi depreciation to make it just, Ooh, you know, yeah. um, there's nothing worse than an Audi depreciation other than maybe Mercedes. Um, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> neat car, lot lot of bang for the buck uh but you better have a audi mechanic or b1 totally. um in mm-hmm. order to really you know you got to be a wrench to enjoy this car um absolutely so uh at eighty five hundred dollars with around three and a half hours to go on bring a trailer where do you think this car goes 
You know, I I am. It, it's been at eighty five hundred for a while. It's only on thirteen bids, which is. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me read this again. Uh, I'm seeing eleven bids, but I might not be eleven bids. No, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I I so our our next car is at eighty five thousand on thirteen mm. bids. So I looked the wrong at my notes. That's right. A bad glance. So eleven bids. I originally put. Um, Twelve thousand five hundred. I'm going to change my bid. I don't believe this car is going anywhere. I'm going to say eleven thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean you can see right here on uh, on the dashboard, right there. Even some of the pixels are already out. And isn't this yep. like a radiator signal, like a coolant problem? I don't know. This car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this even car's like, got this is I, I, you know what? I'm going to say nine thousand. I don't even know yeah. if it goes up to that. I mean, it's yeah. at eighty five hundred bucks. Right. If it climbs another five hundred bucks, all right. You, um, you might good luck, right. whoever gets this thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's hard yeah. to find a low mile example that hasn't been wrecked or totally modified. Yeah. For that reason, some mechanic might pick it up, or somebody that works like some kid that works for Audi that can buy the parts to put this yeah. thing together uh, for cheap might spend over ten. But uh, JP, your bid might be right on the money. Uh, okay, let's have dessert now. We saved All the right. best for last. Uh, so we will sign off this Friday, and uh, thank you for a great week of bid, bid nerds with this st <laughs> just stunning 2050 Marinello. Uh, this is the great uh, uh, last analog cars uh, Ferrari has made. Patrick is a a, a story and fabled and, and sort of uh, well reputable Ferrari mechanic in the Bay Area um, has advised the close colleagues of his to pick these up. He speculates that that someday these are going to be worth big money, um, even over the 575 Marinello, because those have so many more computers in them. Whereas this car is sort of the last great front mm. 12 front engine 12 cylinder manual transmission rear wheel drive nothing in the way between you and that motor you're actually driving a v12 with three pedals and a manual this is a super cool car um this particular example jp has uh, let me read it to you out of atlanta georgia uh, has just 38,000 miles on it. It's a six-speed manual. They've done the sticky buttons. Those are already done. But the belts haven't been done since 2015. So this car needs about a nine or $10,000 service. Uh, being said, there is a 2 B exhaust, and there's an aftermarket radio head unit and an additional subwoofer. Uh, the stock head unit is included with the sale. So uh, if you sort of budget for yourselves about nine or $10,000 to get the belt done, uh, or maybe twelve thousand dollars because your mechanics a little more money. Um, this is still a great pickup because uh, you know I think this is easily one hundred and fifty thousand dollar car in the next couple of years. I think uh, you know the, the 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 market on these is about to go. I think this would be a, uh, a car that doesn't have too many miles. It's still in really good condition. The sticky buttons have been done, and yet thirty eight thousand miles. Go put ten fifteen thousand miles on this car and not really hurt the value. Uh, you could drive this one because it's not a super low mile example. So this might be a great value for somebody's collection that they can drive. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I will tell you that uh, having known you and uh, in the last, I used to just not pay attention to front engine Ferraris. They just used to not be my thing. Um, and in the last year or so, I have completely flipped. I was like, I always basically, if I was going to ever get a Ferrari, it'd be a mid-engine one. And now it really, uh, maybe it's because I'm an old dude, but I mean, this yeah. is just kind of like the ultimate, um, God, that's just, Man, that's just the classiest, coolest car I think on the planet. That is, I mean, I, yeah. I would prefer it in black, but uh, at the same and time, it, who cares? It's better. It's better looking in black, JP. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. black on black is the correct color for this car. If you can find a, a black on black one with some miles that hasn't either been repainted or is like too torn up with stone chips, um, black on black is the color for the car. And let me tell you, man, that V12 with a six speed manual, that, that shifter, the gated shifter, the pedals are light, the steering is direct, and that thing revs to 8,000 RPM. So with the 2B exhaust, and if you really want to go crazy, you actually put some headers on it and drive through the, you know, our tunnel by the airport in Vegas. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man, it'll give you, it'll give you goosebumps down the back of your neck. It's amazing. I will say, you know, you mentioned the seven to $9,000 service. Um, yeah. I know that there's no such thing, you know, um, that if, if the service, uh, write up is okay, this is a 5,000 service or this is a $10,000 service. I mean, I, I know most people that I know that own any Ferrari, you know, when they bring them in uh, for service, you know, like I, I almost bought a, 
a 355 once and I remember talking yeah. to a buddy that had one and he talked me yeah. off the ledge by saying, you know, look, I've never spent less than $13,000 when yeah. I bought the car in for service. Yeah. That's the yeah. lowest. It's like, usually right. it's in the twenties because it's one of those cars that when you're in there, what are you going to do? Not up, not update something, you know, I mean, <laughs> well, you're in, especially because you, in order to keep the values of these things up, you have to get them done at the dealerships, right? right? Or, right. or some kind of certified Ferrari well, dealership a, a or really a reputable, really reputable mechanic. Yeah. They right. Charged. And you're going to have that Italian guy look down his nose at you when you say, yeah, you know, maybe I'll wait to, uh, put, <laughs> put the gasket on that seeping power steering pump, uh, <laughs> till next time. He's just going to be like, you know, contempt and all the horrible things. And if you need to sell the car, you're screwed because they're all going to be like, you know, so yeah. yeah, there's no such thing as deferred maintenance on one of these. Um, no, if there's you not. Keep the value when, up. When, well, and it, that's the thing too. If you, I mean, if that belt breaks on you while you're driving, that's yep. catastrophic. Yep. And I would think that in Las Vegas, just saying um, it, because of the dry climate that the, your interval has to be on the lower end, not the longer mm. end. You could extend the life of that belt in Vegas because yeah. of the climate. So, you know, when it comes time to, to get it done, you've got to get it done. So my advice to you, JP, is find a black on black one with a ton of miles on it that they just did the belt, buy it, drive it for a year and then sell it because it's still got three, four years left on the belt that was just recently done. At what point in that list of things that you're suggesting I do, do I rob a bank? Uh, oh, in order to get the money are. to buy a $200,000, uh, for bid, anyway. bid nerds, bid nerds, bid nerds, we'll, bid nerds, we'll bid nerds, bid nerds. Okay. There yeah, it is. That's yeah, what we're going to we'll do. do all right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So what's your bid on this? Uh, this is your wheelhouse. I mean, I love these cars, but this is definitely I, not something I've been keeping up on. I am completely torn. There's something mm. weird that this car is sitting at $86,000 on just 13 or 14 bids. Um, you know, if the belts were done, this is a $130,000 car. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, take 15,000 off of that for the service and it should bring $115,000, but this auction doesn't look like it's going to get there. So I, 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 I don't know. I'm going to take another five grand off my bid and say $110,000 and it sells. All right. I'm going on the over on this one. I think people are waiting on this one. I mean, that's one of the things about bringing a trailer that we see all the time is that all the action is in the last couple minutes. Uh, and some of these auctions, because if you don't know, uh, these, uh, you know, bring a trailer and cars and bids, uh, they're not like eBay where you can snipe someone at the last minute. If you get your bid in, in the last second that, you know, the auction does not necessarily end when the auction is scheduled to end. If someone right. bids within the last two minutes, it adds two minutes, um, yep. you know, depending on the platform. So, yeah. the auction can just go and go and go if people are fighting for the car uh i yeah and i mean this is just a, a manual like everything that you said the fact that it's the manual and it's the last analog yep. and that's what everybody totally. wants and this car is in totally. beautiful condition i don't think the service thing really means a whole lot a ten thousand dollar service on a car that's worth 150 or more you know at some point um yeah yeah so i'm gonna say buck 15 and i i sure i think it's gonna go higher than that and i think um i'd like to see it go for more than that yeah, yeah. Well, this otherwise, could, this I'm could be... mortgaging the place and uh, buying it. No, this this is ironic. Right. Last Friday, you and I switched bids at the mm-hmm. last minute, and uh, and I won. So I, you might get me back on this one. We'll see. Uh, so there you go. I didn't switch any bids. You're the one that's that's going back and forth. I'm not switching nothing. I am a consistent <laughs> guy. I am consistently you, right. I don't have to change my you. mind. You, you bid switcher, you. <laughs> you bid switcher. Again, I still haven't seen, uh, we, we have to, con- the, the producer of the show has not gotten back to us on a ruling uh, in that particular situation. It's true. Patootie, what, do you have some, did he pay you? Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Look at her face. She's stone, like not giving up anything. That is yeah. a, that is a poker yeah. face. If I ever saw one. Yeah. All not right. Playing card, not playing cards with her. Yeah. This has <laughs> been, uh, not just another episode of bid nerds, but another week of bid nerds. So we really, really appreciate you guys watching the show. We hope that you're, uh, hitting the subscribe button and sharing and telling people about this thing. Um, yeah. we're brand new. We're a new channel and we're getting started and we're having a great time doing it. And we're having a great time with you. Uh, the viewers that are, watching we love the feedback that's coming in please uh tell us more tell us what you want to see tell us about the cars that you want us to review in the future um and let us know if you think our bids are crazy or right on and let's see your bids guys let's uh, let's have some competition with not just him and i but with uh you the audience let's see who's got a better handle on what the heck is going on on these different platforms um michael deep anything you want to say before the weekend starts i know you're about to do a road trip a porsche road trip here shortly yeah yeah, let's. Uh, why don't you and I go for a drive on Sunday? Is that happening? Yeah, Do I get a gas up both the 911s? 
Yeah, let's go, man. All right, there it is. We will make a plan uh, for those yeah. of you. If anybody wants to come to Vegas and join us, uh, DM yeah. us, and uh, we'll go on a little yeah. run together. Um, this yeah. has been another week of Bid Nerds. Thank you so much. Uh, you, we're daily nerd out on the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. Uh, join us next week, starting Monday uh, through Friday and the 9 o'clock hour right here on Facebook, YouTube, and all the InstaWeb channels and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for hanging out, guys.